Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Saylor. I'm a professor of chemistry and biochemistry at UC San Diego. And uh, I'm here to tell you a little bit about what we're doing at the Institute for Materials Discovery and Design. Uh, I'm the co-director. The director is Shirley Meng. And I'm going to start out just giving some kind of visions of what we think the Materials uh, Institute is, is really all about. Uh, comments that I've heard from Shirley is, uh, you know, what are the things that you would like to have a material do? Uh, one is uh, an electric car with a 500 mile range. A second, a cell phone that you could charge just once a month. So just plug it in. Um, we've heard from uh, people that they'd like to have a cell phone that charges off of their body heat. So they never have to plug it in. Uh, and 100 percent energy from sun and wind. What do we mean by that? Uh, if we have renewable energy, we have to be able to store it somehow. That's all enabled by materials. Uh, one of the areas that I work on uh, more specifically is in uh, using materials uh, to augment or improve uh, medical devices and, and uh, medical uh, interventions. One of the dreams that we have, uh, several dreams we have, are trying to develop new cures for Alzheimer's disease, uh, treatments that could prevent blindness uh, in the 11 million patients uh, out there today who have macular degeneration, which is a disease of the eye, uh, typically afflicting older people. Uh, and, you know, we're all talking now and focus so much on the current coronavirus, but, you know, another coronavirus is going to come along or some other disease like that at some point. And uh, what have we learned if our previous experiences about coronaviruses that we could apply to these new ones? One of the key lessons is we really want to be able to get vaccines up and running very quickly. Can we just be enabled by materials? And in fact, the answer is they can. Uh, this is uh, Todd Pascal, who's a, uh, another member of our, uh, our institute. Uh, and one of his visions, he's a computational uh, scientist, and his, one of his visions is to develop quantum devices for more secure banking. Um, this requires materials, actually. Uh, not clear uh, to most people that it does, but it's a really important element of making uh, banking systems more secure uh, in the future. Um, having a rapid uh, home diagnostic test for cancer and a sensor that can detect toxins in our drinking water. So uh, what are the goals for our IMDD? Uh, first, just to kind of give you a sense of where we're going with this uh, institute, we really want to enable uh, innovation for all of the folks here at UC San Diego who are focused on materials research. We believe that we should be able to stand up a, a center that really encompasses all the effort that's going on in materials. And materials is kind of an unusual field because it's really a very broad, very interdisciplinary field. You could be a chemist working in materials and uh, you obviously bring your perspective as a chemist and thinking about how to put molecules together and taking those molecules and making a material. You could be an engineer and thinking about the final properties of, a, of something that you're trying to make and how do you engineer in that uh, material uh, a property that, that it will actually perform in a way you want it to. So there's a really strong complementarity between all of the disciplines, physics, chemistry, uh, mathematics, uh, engineering, uh, biological sciences, uh, focusing on uh, materials. And so one of the, the real purpose of our center is to try to enable all these scientists here at campus who are working on materials to try to uh, enable their research, uh, improve their ability to get their job done. Uh, and there are a number of areas that we focus on, uh, energy systems, electronic devices, uh, lots of uh, aspect uh, emphasis on information technologies and computational technologies. Uh, and uh, medicine is, of course, a really a very, very important element where uh, materials can have a huge impact. So our mission is really just to try to transform that research, uh, education, and training in material science and engineering. And so really kind of give this in the term of uh, what Shirley Meng likes to say is uh, three, the three Fs, which is uh, faculty, facilities, and fellowships. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So I want to back up a little bit and talk a bit about how uh, materials uh, science and, and materials uh, engineering at UCSD really uh, has impacted already uh, the commercial world and, and the world that we live in today. Uh, what you're looking at here is a picture of David Walt, who is a professor from Harvard University, who uh, founded a company called Illumina, which I'm sure you're probably all familiar with. It's a very large company, multi-billion dollar company, founded in San Diego. 
Um, and you can see the quote he gave uh, here on that. One of the reasons they decided to cite Illumina in the San Diego area was because UC San Diego was here. So even back all the way in the early 90s, uh, the material science programs and material scientists at UC San Diego were making an impact. Uh, Drilling down from there, I'll give you one kind of more of a personal uh, experience with Illumina. But when they first got started, uh, they called me and said, hey, do you have any good students that we could send, that you could send to us? We, we were looking to hire some technical staff members to get our technology off the ground. Uh, Christy Canaria, who was a high school student uh, at, here in San Diego, was already working in my laboratory a few years earlier. She transitioned to her uh, BS degree uh, and got her bachelor's degree here at UC San Diego. And throughout that whole period, she actually worked in my laboratory and did um, research. Uh, so when they called me and said, hey, we need some good technically competent materials related scientists to help us get our technology off the ground. She was a natural. I re recommended her. They hired her. Uh, the picture that you're seeing there is uh, labeled uh, Illumina 2000. Actually, that's from their uh, their promotional brochure back in the early 2000s. Uh, and that's a picture of her holding uh, one of the first uh, devices that Illumina developed for doing their high throughput DNA diagnostic screening technologies. After that, she moved on uh, into uh, more into policy and became a, a, a fellow at, from the American Association for Advancement of Science uh, and then moved into uh, uh, NIH. And one of the things she told me uh, just recently was, you know, it's kind of interesting. I've come full circle. When I started at Illumina, they were funded by the SBIR program. Uh, that's a small business innovative research program that was a big government program to help small companies get off the ground. Uh, and now she actually runs that SBIR program at NIH. So it's kind of interesting. So one last uh, element. So as the materials uh, center and the, this institute uh, was getting started, and we've really just been going for about a year now, uh, one of the first things it did, as I mentioned, was to try to initiate and, and uh, elaborate on uh, the existing uh, efforts that we have at UCSD focusing on materials. Uh, and there was an opportunity that came along from the National Science Foundation called a MRSEC, uh, that M-R-S-E-C stands for Materials Research Science and Engineering Center, a uh, major uh, funding initiative by the National Science Foundation to try to improve uh, material science programs across the country. Uh, they put out a call, we pitched for it. This was my team. Uh, and uh, you see Shirley Mung's here, and as well as myself, we're uh, part of the uh, facilities and the uh, uh, leadership staff of the, of the MRSEC. It actually got funded. We landed an $18 million grant just earlier this year. Um, and that is going to then focus on, for the next six years, uh, two really big themes. Uh, one that harnesses our computational expertise here at UC San Diego, uh, using computers to try to design uh, new materials. You know, people have been using computers to design new materials for a long time. Uh, probably the biggest impact that you've seen in it is a lot of the medicines that we use today were designed originally on a computer. They figured out how that molecule bound to the receptor and, and then designed the best molecules that might be able to do that to go after a specific targeted disease. Um, but we really haven't applied those very high technology, high fidelity tools to designing materials of other types. Uh, and that's really one of the focuses of that. The second focus of our uh, center is uh, using synthetic biology to create materials. So using the tools of biology to create uh, new materials. Um, again, uh, in the medical field, it's really common to use biology to create new materials. They use giant reactors to make a lot of the biologic uh, drugs that are used today. Uh, an example is Avastin, uh, an antibody-based drug that's used to treat macular degeneration, a disease of the eye. Uh, doctors inject that into patients daily. Uh, those drugs were synthesized in basically giant vat reactors, kind of like the ones that you use to make beer. Uh, can we use those same biotechnology tools that can make these exquisitely accurately uh, and, and, and potent drugs to make some very exquisite and potent new materials that could do things other than just act as medicines? And so that's really what that's focusing on. Uh, lastly, just kind of cover what we've been doing at the uh, at the center, really to focus on education. Uh, and uh, we have a, a strong program for engaging students, uh, people like Christy Canaria, the next generation of students who are going to be uh, our knowledge workers and our technology workers in the materials community. Uh, we run these summer schools as part of our MERSEC for six weeks every summer. 
uh, we bring these people in. These, are, these can be high school students like Christy was. They could be undergraduate students, even graduate students, or even uh, senior professors who want to come visit our labs. Uh, we train them for six weeks on our techniques, and then they're ready and poised to go into uh, the field of, of materials. So that's just one little snippet of what we're doing with our MRSEC.